So yesterday I tested out the new 300 amp hour mini by Watt Cycle and I found that the cells that they were using were 280 amp hour cells. They mislabeled those things. So a lot of people said, hey, this one is cheaper and it has low temp charging protection and it has Bluetooth. So on paper, this should be better than the Watt Cycle battery. So today we're gonna test it to see if the overcurrent protection works. We're gonna test to see if the low temp charging protection works. And then we're gonna open it up and compare the build quality and see how it compares to a watt cycle. Now, first off, I did a capacity test on this battery and it only pulled 295 amp hours. For a 280 amp hour battery, that's not that great. The watt cycle 280 amp hour cells actually pulled 305 amp hours, which is quite a bit more. But but these are brand new matched Eve cells, so that might be why. We have no idea what they're using inside the eco-worthy battery. Next, this battery is fully charged, so we're gonna take it over to the surge station and see if the overcurrent protection works. Now, when we did this test with the watt cycle battery, we found out that it was set too high. The overcurrent protection on that battery is set to 850 amps. And none of the hardware on the inside is designed to work with that current. So that could actually melt or cause a fire. So we're gonna do the same test with the eco-worthy battery, and then we're gonna add 600 amps and see if it will disconnect. We're gonna measure it with our fluke meter. Now it's connected and then flip the switch. We're pulling 540 amps. And it's pretty common for these budget 12 volt batteries to not have any overcurrent protection at all. And that's two minutes and it did not trigger. So it does not have overcurrent protection or it is set really high. So let's go to their website. It's so unnecessary to do this. I don't understand their logic. That's weird. It has the same stats as the watt cycle battery, 850 amps. The current rating of the terminals, the temperature rating of the insulation, nothing on this thing can do a continuous 850 amps. Let me show you what a battery is supposed to do. So this is a 100 amp hour battery and the overcurrent protection works and it's set to the proper current for the hardware inside. First, we're gonna do about 120 amps and see what happens. We'll flip the switch. Look at that. It did not let it happen at all. Holy cow. That's how it's supposed to work. It instantly disconnects. Anything over 100 amps and this thing trips instantly. It's the best battery I've seen for overcurrent protection. Now, even though the BMS has really good overcurrent protection, it's still advisable to add your own breaker or fuse to your battery banks, especially if you have lots of them connected in parallel. Now for most solar systems, the surge capacity is not a concern because the batteries are so large. Typically at most you'll charge and discharge with 0.1C to 0.2C. So that's one tenth to one fifth of the battery's total output. And the battery cells can actually do three times of that. So if you have a properly sized system, this type of overcurrent protection built into the BMS will not cause any issues. If your battery is so small that you are tripping this, you need a larger battery. Also, just because the cells can output a certain amount of current doesn't mean the BMS, the supply conductors, or the terminal can handle that current. The entire circuit has to be able to handle that current, not just the cells. Something else to mention is that if you have a small battery with lithium cells, you can actually program the BMS to have a time delay for the overcurrent protection. And typically that will be for one, three, or five seconds. That way the battery can start a motor with a lot of current and then it will shut itself down. That way it can still start 600 or 800 or 1000 amp loads, but it will not destroy itself and hurt the hardware inside. And this is a common feature on the higher quality batteries. And that's been around for about six years. So there's no excuse that the new budget batteries cannot program that time delay function so that they can handle surge. Having it so that 600 or 800 amps can come out of a terminal when you have a two watt gauge cable is asking for problems. That is a horrible idea. You cannot do that. If you have that circuit,
surge capacity, there is a way to program your BMS so it can do it safely. And the EcoWorthy and the Watt Cycle do not have that. Watt Cycle this morning said that they're gonna change their overcurrent protection so it's much lower and safer. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Especially when used for solar, you're not gonna hit that surge capacity. If these are starting batteries, then you absolutely need that. But yeah, for these, you can have a lower continuous discharge current rating and a standard overcurrent protection rating and it will be fine. Anyways, moving on, let's actually tear this thing apart now. Not bad. So the build quality is surprisingly good. We have steel cell holders, a large BMS. I would absolutely trust this with more current than the watt cycle one. And these supply conductors are massive and they're protected. So this for the price so far is really nice. Now we're gonna test the low temp charging protection. So here's the sensor and we're charging with 18 amps. Now we'll stick the sensor in the ice. Oh, and it works. So the cells did not test that high, but everything else on this battery is really nice. Now I can't believe this is cheaper than the watt cycle. You just compare the size of the heat sink on this thing. This BMS is massive. And these are held together with zip ties. These actually have this heat shielding right here. And a second temperature sensor, that's nice. And on the top, we have the Bluetooth module. Also, there's no globs of solder like a lead time battery. And I think this is cheaper than a lead time battery, but please check the prices. The prices of these things change all the time. It's hard to keep up. Now, if we could take the cells from the watt cycle and put them into here, we would have a really nice battery. That's pretty much the only downside of this thing. It did pass my test too. I just really wish these cells could pull a higher number. Maybe they need to be balanced. Maybe they're imbalanced. A lot of these budget batteries have that problem. Now between these two batteries, which one would you choose? I'm completely torn. So yeah, I wanna see what you guys think. Would you buy the watt cycle or would you buy this? If they're the exact same price and this one was not on sale, they both have the same MSRP, but this build quality is really nice. So yeah, let me know down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.